I'm going to talk about the Mohawk Indian Village at the Eastern States Exposition. And I put 1920 to 1931, and you'll see why as we go through, but it actually morphed a bit and, co and continued up all the way through World War II. So all the way through 1941. All right, so a little bit about the Eastern States Exposition, because you really kind of have to know that in order to understand the Mohawk Indian Village. The Eastern States Exposition was, and still is, a multi-state fall fair. It began through something called the Eastern States Movement of the early 1910s, when the Northeast was rapidly industrializing and sort of leaving behind the agricultural movement, um, and, and farms were, were languishing. And a number of people recognized that farms are essential to the industrialized cities and the in industry is important to the farmers because everybody was leaving the farms and going to the cities and they needed to mechanize. So the Eastern States movement was a movement to try and bring those two things together. Um, and they found a location in West Springfield, Massachusetts, which really had to do with the people that were founding it were all from the Springfield area, central Massachusetts. Um, and they decided that they wanted to try and kick this thing off by bringing a national dairy show to the East. It had never been on the East Coast. It was typically was in the Midwest, frequently in Chicago, and they managed to pull it off and bring the National Dairy Show to the East in 1916. And they put the two together, the Eastern States Exposition and the National Dairy Show, and that immediately made this a, a huge success. It expanded in 1917, but then in 1918, all the buildings and the grounds were taken from the Army used during World War I. So the exposition had a year off, if you will, but reopened in 1919. And it's been held every year thereafter, then except the World War II years when the Army again took over the grounds. Um, it's called the Big E now. It's mostly now New England, but it was originally the 10 Northeastern states. BSA's involvement, as far as I can tell, started in 1919. And you'll see as we talk a bit about the Mohawk Indian Village that there's been some confusion about when the Mohawk Indian Village started, 1919, 1920. Actually started in 1920. But in 1919, the BSA was actually at the Eastern States Exposition. And in the 10th annual report, which was in Scouting Volume 8, number 8, in April of 1920, the leader of the first field district, which was the predecessor to the region, so basically Boston region, what became Region 1, said in his report, in the 10th annual report, that assistance was given in connection with the Eastern States Exposition at Springfield, Massachusetts in September. And the Department of Camping's report, Director L.L. L. McDonald stated, another scouting extension feature, which we believe to be a great value is the preparation of scout exhibits for educational purposes. Such exhibits have been displayed with good effect at the Eastern States Exposition in Springfield, Massachusetts. And that was during the period when the local council was Springfield Council, later became Hampton Council. And probably the scouts from Springfield Council were the ones that were involved in 1919. After that exposition in 1919, Council Commissioner of Springfield Council pitched to O.H. Benson, who is the guy who founded, well, one of the founders of junior achievement, which if you've heard of junior achievement, you know what I'm talking about. The idea of having local scouts construct a full-size reproduction of an Iroquois longhouse village on the exposition grounds, and scouts would staff the village during the exposition in September. Benson thought it was a wonderful idea, and he promised that if the National Council would cooperate in making that plan a success, junior achievement would fund construction and pay the expenses of Boy Scout delegates from each of the 10 eastern states, which was the six states of New England, plus New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, and Delaware. So he pitched this to National, and on April 7th, 1920, the BSA accepted. And in um, Scout Memorabilia in 2003, they reproduced the letter from Chief Scout Executive James West to Mr. Benson, accepting the offer for the National Council to actually pursue this cooperative endeavor with the Junior Achievement Bureau and the Eastern States Exposition to build this Mohawk Indian village and then staff it in the September 1920 uh, exposition. So National became involved from the very, very beginning. The BSA promoted the the idea of the first Mohawk Indian village very extensively, sending a promotional brochure to councils throughout the United States and put a full page article in the August 19, 1920 issue of Scouting, which included what they felt scouts who could be selected by merit to be the ones from each state to go to the Eastern States Exposition and represent the Boy Scouts of America should have. And the idea was there would be 40 scouts selected, four each from the 10 states that were involved, um, selected 
by merit by the various councils and submitted to national and national would select the top 40. And then um, the Eastern States Exposition folks would actually pay for them to go to the exposition, staff the Mohawk Village, which was going to be constructed, and then be sent back home again. And they would bring exhibits and so forth. Um, this shows the actual promotional brochure that the Boy Scouts put out for the 1920 uh, Eastern States Agricultural and Industrial Exposition, which is what it was originally called, um, and hosted by the Junior Achievement Bureau and the Eastern States League in cooperation with the Boy Scouts of America, something called the Mohawk Village. And they had a picture of what the Mohawk Village was going to look like, which was a 50 foot long longhouse in the middle and uh, other smaller constructed huts, if you will, around, around the outside to look exactly like what a longhouse village would have looked like uh, back in the Indian days. So they built it, and scouts and scouters from the Springfield Council, led by Scoutmaster Archie Fisher of Troop 23, um, under the tutelage of the New York State archaeologist, Mr. Parker, who was a Seneca native, actually constructed this village using spruce bark shingles discovered at and salvaged from a nearby lumberman's discard pile. And here's a couple of pictures of that being constructed, um, one from Scouting Magazine and the other one from um, a book about the centennial of the uh, Eastern States Exposition, uh, made from sections of spruce bark and chicken wire underneath and everything to make it look, you know, more sturdy than it would have been back then. But um, this is what it was constructed like. According to Mr. Secchi, who wrote that 100th anniversary book, um, bronze medals were awarded to the Boy Scouts who worked the longest on the construction. And shown here is one of those medals. It's inscribed Mohawk Village 1920. It's a Dejus and Clust medal. And I received it from Rod Goudreau, who's here tonight. Uh, when I first got it, I think Rod and I thought it actually was for attendance at the 1920 exposition at the Mohawk Village, but actually it was for those scouts, local and in, in Springfield Council, who helped to build the village. So the 1920, the, which was the first Mohawk Indian village, um, was held. 30 scout delegates actually went there. They didn't get 40. They only had 30. Um, and they responded promptly to every call for service, which scouts could be expected to perform. And you'll see that over time, um, there was the Mohawk Village, and later there became a service division also, which was mostly uh, from scouts from Hampton Council area. Hamilton Bradley, who is just recently recently recognized last month as the earliest known Black Eagle Scout was one of New York's two delegates. And he wrote an essay on his experience in his council annual, and that was included in the uh, Brian on Scouting blog on March 24th, which I thought was amazing because I was in the middle of starting to write this thing when suddenly I'm reading Brian on Scouting. And here's an article about Hamilton Bradley who actually attended uh, the very first uh, Mohawk Indian village. Very cool, uh, serendipity. The village of course was left standing and plans were made to use it in 1921. And the Boy Scouts and scouting um, said it's considered an excellent means of interesting the public in the Boy Scout movement. Boy was it. 1920 Mohawk Indian village memorabilia. Uh, so far, these are the only things I've ever found. These are first, second and third premiums for exhibits that were shown at, uh, by the scouts at the Mohawk Indian Village. Um, at the time, um, the junior department at the expo considered only of three different groups, uh, boys and girls work, which later became 4-H in, in agriculture, home economics, and the industrial village, as well as, as um, the Mohawk Indian Village. And you can see here, right above where it says the premium number, it says Mohawk Indian Village. Um, I think ribbons were uh, done for almost every year, although I only have some of them. 1921, the village was now up to five divisions of the junior department. The Girl Scouts had their first camp in 1921, the second village. Um, ribbons for the first, second, and third premium, as I say, probably exist, but I have not seen them. And this rather crude patch and photo of the Boy Scouts escorting Chief Scout Executive West at the 1921 Mohawk uh, Village at the Expo came with it. Um, I'm aware of a second one of these. Um, I actually got the lesser uh, quality one. There was one that had been auctioned before, and I think Jeff Morley actually owns it. 1921 Village, they lived in the cabins on either side and, uh, and did all the various activities, uh, and the full contingent of 40 scouts was believed to have been in attendance that year. Shown here is an ID tag from the 1921 uh, exposition, um, issued on the account of, it's hard to read, but it says Mohawk at the bottom, so that would have been a Mohawk scout, um, showing that he was entitled to be there. The third Mohawk Indian village in 1922 came under the direct supervision of the National Camp Director. This is the first year they said it was under the actual direct supervision of the National Camp Director. But you'll see a fellow whose name is going to be said a lot here, William C. Wessel, who was the assistant of the National Camp Director, 
actually was at the 1920 first Mohawk Indian village because Hamilton Bradley talks about meeting him there. Um, so 50 scouts now would be selected up from 40 um, based on merit and that they would demonstrate scouting, exhibit handicrafts and give aid in many forms of public service. Um, and they should try to be one of the ones to be selected. Various councils did it in various ways. Sometimes it was their honor campers from their camp. Other times it was Eagle Scouts. Sometimes it was just people that had competed. Um, and this time now in a June scouting article, uh, it said that a new feature, 10 merit badge exhibits, one to each state would be announced, and they would also be selected by competition. So they were, so BSA was saying, hey, let's have merit badge booths at the Mohawk Indian Village as well at the expo, and one from each state, and they competed for it. Uh, in the July issue of Scouting that year, they actually put out, here's what we think it might want to look like when you do one of these merit badge exhibits. And the 10 winners would compete with other junior achievement work at the exhibition, and a second unit would be located in the Indian buildings, meaning the Longhouse, comprising nature study and achievement exhibits of all description. And they say, here too, prizes will be awarded. So there was going to be prizes for both the merit badge booth competition and the individual scout and council exhibits that are in the Longhouse. Um, and a Sea Scout exhibit was going to be prepared by at the Sea Camp Tabor Academy in Marion, Massachusetts, which would be a special feature at the MIV. The October 22, 1922 issue of Scouting reported on what happened at the uh, at the exposition in 1922, um, had nine photos. And in the bottom left-hand corner of the left-hand page, it talks about how people could order actual copies, eight by 10, of the nine photos that were appeared in Scouting Magazine. And I've been fortunate enough over the years to manage to pick up six of those nine. So here they are. Um, and I've labeled them here. This is Council Merit Badge booth uh, for Rhode Island and New York, the information booth, um, and the, on the right-hand side, the Sea Scouting exhibit from uh, Tabor Academy. The next one shows the other side of that photo, which is the Sea Scouts now on the left, um, Vermont and Massachusetts, which had bird study and botany and carpentry. Um, here's a picture of the inside of the longhouse. Uh, very difficult to see, but if you looked up towards the roof, you can see the chicken wire that helped to hold the roof on. And these were exhibits that were shipped to the Mohawk Indian village from all over the 10 states from the Northeast. Um, and people would come through and look at all the, uh, the various exhibits the scouts had put together. Here's a picture of Governor Edward I. Edwards of New Jersey um, addressing the assembled scouts right outside the opening to one of the uh, huts that the scouts lived in. On the right-hand side there, about half of the opening can be seen in the longhouse. Here's a picture of the staff in front of the longhouse. And William Wessel is the center guy of the three seated in the, in the front row. You'll see a lot of other pictures where he shows up. He was intimately involved in the uh, Mohawk Indian Village for its entire time under Boy Scout uh, national leadership. Um, here's a picture of the service area with the service scouts from Hampton Council which were camped all around the MIV, and they were standing for a dress there. On the fourth year, uh, again, held under the direction of the National Camping Department with Wessel uh, superintending the event. Council merit badge booths and individual scout displays were again in evidence, and 15 scouts again received all expense paid trips to the exposition. And according to an August Scouting Magazine announcement, any scout from the 10 eastern states could send exhibits of handicraft, collections, etc., directly to the exposition grounds care of Mr. Wessel, and they would all be rated for recognition and prizes. Um, and I have not seen any memorabilia from 1922 or 19. 23. Again, in 24, organized again by the National Department of Camping, Mr. Wessel, 55 scouts were selected from the 10 states, so up by another five. And it was touted in Scouting Magazine as one of the big four of 1924, second only to the 1924 World Jamboree Troop, which interestingly was led by William Wessel. 11 councils prepared and staff merit badge booths, and according to the 1924 annual of the Boy Scouts of Delaware and Montgomery counties, that Pennsylvania council's pioneering merit badge booth, which I've shown a picture of here, was awarded the plaque for the highest honors. I've never seen any of these plaques. I would love to see them. I would love to have one, but I'd love to even see one. And I presume that ribbons were awarded for first, second, and third premiums, but I've not seen them. This year, however, they put out a patch. This is apparently the first Mohawk Indian Village patch issued by National, dated 1924. It's the only one I don't have. And so if anybody can find me one, I would love to add that to my collection. And the camping department issued one of those to each one of those 55 MIV scouts. 
Wildcats. In 1925, for the sixth Mohawk Indian village, after five punishing winters, as they put it, the original Mohawk village succumbed and had to be torn down. National decided to replace it with a Plains Indian teepee encampment. Had nothing to do with the Northeast or what the Indians would have worn then. The natives didn't do that kind of thing. But the scouts encampment retained the Mohawk Indian Village name. Here are some photos from the 1925 Mohawk Indian Village. The one on the left is a great photo showing the front portion of the uh, encampment uh, now with the Plains Indian design. And over on the left-hand side, you can see the Landship Wasp, um, which was the Sea Scout uh, exhibit. And on the right, you actually see the, uh, the fellows on the Wasp saying hello, if you will, <laughs> recognizing the Chief Scout Executive, James West, of course. Um, prizes were awarded for the best Council Merit Badge booths and for the best individual exhibits, and each Scout received the 1925 emblem. This ribbon, which is not dated, is believed to be from 1925, but it could be from one of those earlier years that I hadn't said I saw anything from. It's the only one of this type I've seen. 1926, the seventh Mohawk Indian village. The uh, catalog that was put out by the Eastern States Exposition, which is a book, really, like a hundred page book, um, said that scouts will occupy a model camp providing space for specialized patrols, which give demonstrations in pine tree, trek cart patrol work, etc. And the Plains Indian Camp composed of teepees will adjoin the regular camp. The Boy Scout Service Division continued again with 80 or more local Hampton Scout Council Scouts on duty every day to provide service to the exposition. The Department of Camping organized an Indian teepee building contest with a silver cup being awarded to the council exhibiting the best 16 foot teepee built this year and a scout block decoration for each teepee exhibited Again, these are things I've not seen, but they're referred to, so I assume they're out there somewhere. In 1926, you know, now the, they went to the teepees, so Harry Jordan, the main guide, helped the scouts build a log cabin to serve as the village headquarters. On the previous page where I showed you the photo from 1925, that log cabin is not there because it had not yet been built. This photo of the 1926 staff in front of the cabin was included in the report, again, of the Delaware and Montgomery County Council's delegation to the 20, in their 26th annual. Um, and according to them, they won three first and two second place uh, prizes. I believe Mr. Wessel is in the front row all the way to the right. And interestingly, some of these guys are wearing a medal with what looks like a white uh, ribbon, a white drape. I'm not certain, but these might be medals that were worn. There, there were delegate medals worn by the various um, delegations at the exposition, and they may have been won for the um, for the folks of the Mohawk Indian Village. That's a, it's pure speculation, but I've seen some other photos where of this poor quality, but still that are wearing that particular medal. Again, ribbons awarded for each of the best exhibits. I have first, second, and third place from 1926 and the 1926 patch. If you look closely at the 26 patch, it looks like 1925, but they closed the loop at the bottom. Um, I've looked, every one that I have ever seen looks like this. There are none that I've seen that actually looks like it has a six. And every one of them, if you look on the back, the five has been stitched to close the loop into a six. I don't know whether they reordered them in 1926 and they came as 25 or what happened, but they appear to all be a 25 with the loop closed. Uh, the 8th Mohawk Village in 1927 continued the tradition of selecting scouts from each of the 10 eastern states, plus inviting councils, troops, and individual scouts, a lot of, you know, rural scouts, um, to send exhibits to the exposition for display and competition. Um, the councils to put on merit badge displays. Suitable prizes were awarded. The exhibit categories were models, collections, handicrafts, and art. And of course, Bill Wessel hand, uh, headed the staff. Um, and they made the point that he was the scoutmaster of the champion jamboree troop in 1924. The focus again was on presenting a model scout camp and performances by specialized patrols. And the service scouts were led by Hampton Council Scout Executive Jay Hamilton Lewis. This is the letter that the uh, BSA sent to the various scout executives of the councils throughout the 10 states, signed by Bill Wessel, inviting everybody to compete uh, at the Mohawk Indian Village. Along with the letter was an application for the Boy Scouts that were to be selected by each council to then be presented to national, to the committee, to decide who was going to be the lucky 50 or 55. And along with that came a promotional brochure. This is the front and back covers of that brochure. Um, very nicely done. 
and some of the interior pages of the uh, brochure itself. Good picture of the longhouse, even though the longhouse no longer existed. TP at the bottom and that photo of uh, the folks at the log cabin. There they are right there. And all the types of exhibits that they were hoping that people would bring. The, the photo at the top on the left-hand side shows them inside the exhibit hall, which was the Vail building. Uh, they, they were not having these exhibits at that point right within the Mohawk Indian Village. Great photo of the 1927 Mohawk Indian Village uh, out of the 75th anniversary um, book about the Eastern States Exposition. Wonderful photo of the uh, land ship Wasp. You can see the log cabin now uh, that they had built in 1926. In 27, of course, ribbons again, first, second, and third place. Um, I have all three. For some reason, the third place white ribbons do not hold up. My 26 and 27, plus a dupe I have of the 27, are all that ratty. The 1927 patch, of course, is dated accordingly. Every scout who um, was invited to come got one. 1928, which was the ninth Mohawk Indian Village, same pattern as the same of the previous two years. National Camping Department touting the village in the scouting magazine in July and September. And the Nationals' view of the village's importance can be seen in the second paragraph from the end, which says, Says, the Mohawk Indian Village may be termed an experiment station for new ideas, a scout school of leadership training. Under the direction of the National Department of Camping, a personnel of exceptionally high character has been developed. Here's a great photo of the 1926 uh, ex exhibit hall. I think it's from 26. It was the November 1928 issue of scouting. Lots of really good exhibits there. Again, memorabilia, first, second, and third place uh, ribbons. I only have the first. And uh, everybody got a patch, says 1928. And a large silver cup would be given to the counselor troop, not under council, which constructs the most interesting and instructive merit badge booth. And they'd be select second and third class prizes. So there's prizes out there that I just have not seen. This one is pretty interesting. 1928, the scout named Charles Weaver of Hanover, Pennsylvania attended in 27 and 28. This picture of him was taken. He's the guy um, with the leatherworking pen in his hand that's on the viewer's right-hand side. And he had in his collection that his family sold on eBay that I purchased, a 1928 Mohawk Village, what I think is a watch fob. It's much smaller than the picture shows here. It's very small, one by one and a quarter inches. Nice piece of jewelry. There's nothing on the backside, but it's, uh, it says Mohawk Village 1928. Some America has been signally honored through the conferring of the gold medal as best all-round camper upon Charles L. Weaver, Troop 3 Hanover, at the Mohawk Indian Village Eastern States Exposition, Springfield, Massachusetts. It's a 1928 article. I'm suspecting that the rest of the medal is gone and this is all that's left. Still a suspicion. Don't know it's true, but sure makes more sense than it might have been some sort of a watch fob. You got the all-round camper. For the 1928, they put out a newspaper. The Worcester Press Association put out a newspaper at the Mohawk Indian Village four columns, 11 by 17, double-sided, single-sheet newspaper. Um, really quite uh, something to have to put together every day. But they put one of those out every single day while they were there, and I have all but I think one of them. And they also published a 15-page Mohawk log that they gave out to the village scouts and staff, and it included the photo of the entire group from the uh, 28 Mohawk Indian Village. I included this because shortly after the 1928 exposition, the Boy Scouts updated their insignia requirements and what the official uniform was to be worn and how it was to be worn. And in December of 1928, they promulgated this and it was published in the 19, the January 1929 issue of scouting. And the Mohawk Indian Village was of significance uh, to the Boy Scouts of such significance that they listed it as one of the four types of things that could be uh, temporary insignia to be worn on the right hand pocket of the scout shirt. Um, on, right on top of it says International Jamboree and below that says Eastern States Exposition. It shows the importance that the National put on this particular event. The 10th year or 10th anniversary of the Mohawk Indian Village. I prefer 10th year because when you say 10th anniversary, it sounds like 1919 to 1929 was huge and National went all out. Bill Wessel wrote a two-page spread in the July issue of Scouting on how to prepare exhibit frames and suggested uh, at the end of it that councils should councils and troops should be submitting these to try and compete uh, for prizes at the Eastern States Exposition. Uh, in the August issue of Scouting, they touted the value of the Scouts participation in the exposition before a crowd of 300,000 over a one week period. Um, and then they talked up the Indian pageant, which was put on by the Hampton Council. For the first time in Scouting Magazine, they actually showed a picture of the patch as well. The uh, National issued this eight and a half by 11 poster 
uh, to help promote the Mohawk Village at the Eastern States Exposition and the 50 free trips that scouts could get. Very colorful, quite well done. The initials on the uh, drawing of the teepee are RWDG, which is Robert W. DeGroat, who we'll see later on. They also put out a promotional brochure eight-page booklet promoting the 10th Mohawk Indian Village. Here's the, the cover and the introductory page, which thanks the Eastern States Exposition for their financial and other support. Again, Patch, 1929. And here is a the letter to a scout who was actually selected to be one of the scouts from the various states to come to the Mohawk Indian Village. And it actually talks about how the patch is to be shown, sewn on the right-hand pocket immediately below the button. Um, and it's signed by Mr. DeGroat, who replaced Mr. Wessel as the camp director, although Wessel stayed on as the uh, secretary of the committee. Uh, and it appears to me that he probably stepped back a little bit in 1929 because he was involved in the demonstration cubbing program. And in 1930, when the cubbing, cubbing program became official, he became the BSA's first director of cubbing. 1929, as I keep talking about these specialized uh, patrol demonstrations, I'm fortunate enough to have a set of photos uh, showing Pine Tree Patrol of Troop 13 from Holyoke, Massachusetts doing its thing. I'll flip through these fairly quickly. The cover one is pretty nice, hand-drawn uh, card there with the Indian on it. But they're showing them doing their thing in competition right there at the Mohawk Indian Village. Um, and the last one shows them all set up and you can see some of the other buildings at the village. I have this ribbon from the 1928 village. Um, it's much larger than the other ones you've seen. This one's almost 11 inches tall, probably 10 inches tall. It's a second place ribbon from the uh, Mohawk Indian Village. And I suspect it might be one of the ones for the merit badge booths or maybe one of the patrol competitions rather than for an individual scouts exhibit. Um, the Worcester Boy Scout Press Club, again, published uh, a newsletter. I would call it a newsletter this time rather than a newspaper. Eight and a half by 11 called the Scout Journalist. They put one out every single day, probably put out from the merit badge booth from journalism and printing. And then they published a 10th anniversary edition of the Mohawk Mohawk Tales for the scouts and staff. And among its contents are copies of each day's edition of the Scout Journalist. The, uh, the cover is uh, shown there on the right-hand side, the brown cover. And this is one of the places where they say 10th anniversary, 1919 to 1929. But the Mohawk Village was really 1920 to 1929 at that point, the 10th season or the 10th event. Photos from inside Mohawk Tales, again, the staff photo and the uh, participants photo. The 11th year, 1930, this, uh, the stock market crashed about a month after the 1929 exhibition. Um, and initially, most families were not really greatly affected because most people didn't own stocks. About 16% of the populace owned stocks. As a result, the Boy Scouts' participation in the 1930 exposition really was very little changed. Um, and it was still touted as before being a, a, a of great importance and calling it one of the show places of scouting in the 10 Eastern states. They put out a, a, a beautiful brochure, again, um, promoting the event. Um, this one has a wonderful pen and ink drawing uh, by M. Fowler, who I have not been able to find out exactly who M. Fowler was, but uh, really, really fine artwork there. Bill Wessel remained as the secretary of the Mohawk Indian Village Committee. And in the middle, this is the interior spread of the 1930 promotional brochure. Again, Mr. Fowler did this. It's terrific work. I think it's fabulous. Um, and I've blown up the centerpiece here so you can see, hopefully you can see, all the little scout figures that go around the bonnet um, right at the base of each feather. Um, just what I would consider just some terrific artwork. Um, as usual, they gave out a patch. This one dated 1930, same designs every other year. But interestingly, the promotional brochure said that all boys who make a satisfactory record at the village are entitled to wear a special attractive embroidered badge. So not just the ones who got the free trip, but anybody else who came with an exhibit or came as part of a council contingent uh, all had the opportunity to get the uh, patch. I don't know if that was true in all the other years. Um, this is the only place I've actually seen that stated. 1930, they also put out a diary for scouts who attended the Mohawk Indian Village to use. Um, here's a few of the pages there. The cover page is notice it's the same as the promotional brochure, but without the Boy Scouts um, address at the bottom. Uh, it's called My Trip to Mohawk. This one was from Edwin Roeder of Albany, New York. And the autograph page, you can see he's got James West's autograph. At the bottom, he's got Bill Wessel. And in the middle, he's got what looks like M.G. Fowler, who might be the artist. I'm not entirely certain. And some other fellows that I haven't actually tried to figure out. I own two copies of this diary. The other one has some autographs as well, and it has James West in it as well. In 1931, this was the beginning of the end. 
Remember now that the depression is deepening. The first half of the depression through the middle of 1931 was not nearly as bad as it was from the middle of 1931 through 1933, but it was worsening. And it appears the changes needed to occur in the preparation and conduct of the Mohawk Indian village. It's possible that the exposition officials may still have sponsored the 50 free trips for select scouts, but that might also not have happened. I'm not entirely certain because there's no mention of the event at all in Scouting Magazine in 1930. Um, a lot of council Councils were in dire straits. Many of their executives had to find other work. Um, and so it appears that National pushed this one out to the region to run. So Region 1 um, ran the big show at the exposition. Um, and Skipper Hilliard B. Holbrook, who was the Deputy Regional Scout Executive for Sea Scouting, was assigned to handle the organization, administration, and program, quote, in order to materially relieve local scout executives from the usual burdens of detail incurred by participation in the event. And he designed the Boy Scout Trail to Citizenship and set up the Mohawk Village in circus form under a canvas big top. They put out a, an eight-page brochure addressed to the council's troops and scouters. Does not say of the six New England states, but there's a couple of places in all of the you know, all of the wording in this brochure that make me think that they limited it to the six New England states and didn't attempt to try and get folks outside of New England to help put this thing on. The scouts may still have come from the other four states, I'm not entirely certain. But the region actually ran this in 1931. 1930, 11 years, was the last year that National actually ran it. Um, and by the way, boarding, lodging, and admission to the exposition was provided, but not transportation to or from the event for anybody. But National did produce a patch. So there is a 1931 Mohawk Indian Village patch um, for uniform wear. But other than that, I've seen no evidence of National's involvement. So this was really the end of National's involvement in the Mohawk Indian Village at the Eastern States Exposition. But it did continue on for another 10 seasons. In 1932, it appears now that it had come all the way down to Hampton Council to run this thing. John C. Norsk was the superintendent. He was the scout exec in Hampton Council, and he ran the Mohawk Scout Village. You read about it, and it's very similar to what was done before, but it appears to have been run solely by and staffed solely by Hampton uh, Council. I could be wrong about that. I don't have very much information at all about this. And they also did the Boy Scout service uh, troop that had been going on since the very beginning. 1933 through 1939, pretty much the same. I don't have any information on 33, 34, 35, but I have information on 36, 7, and 8. And, and they all pretty much say the same thing, that the Mohawk Scout Village was run by Hampton Council, and they also ran the Scout Boy Scout service uh, troop. In 1940, interestingly, here's the last thing um, issued by the Boy Scouts that I have found for the, uh, the Mohawk Village. This was issued by the Hampton Franklin Council out of, uh, out of Northampton, Massachusetts, which is about 18 miles north of Springfield. Um, they had a patch for the Boy Scout service troop um, at the Mohawk Village. It's a white felt. This came out of Scout memorabilia. It is another item that I do not own and wish I did. So if you ever find it, please let me know. Um, so that was 1940. And then 1941, which was the 25th anniversary of the Eastern States Exposition, they put out a Silver Jubilee Illustrated souvenir program and catalog. And Mr. Norsk um, wrote a more detailed piece for the Boy Scouts of America participation. And at this point, he talked about the Mohawk Indian Village having been erected 22 years before. Um, and now it's called the Mohawk Scout Exhibits, not even the Mohawk Scout Village anymore. Boy Scout service is still there. So they were still doing it in 1941. Now that was September 1941. On December 7th, Pearl Harbor was bombed. And when Pearl Harbor was bombed, that was the end of the Mohawk Indian Village. But in 1941, they did manage to have something that I could collect, which is a meal credential from uh, 1941. It was issued, it could be issued to somebody who participated in the various things. And on the right hand column, the third one down, you'll see Mohawk Scouts. Now, this guy happened to be junior poultry, <laughs> but not Mohawk Scouts, but Scout Service and Mohawk Scouts. If you were working the exposition, they would provide meals for the period of time that you were there. So this meal credential was one of the things that you could have. Like I said, Japanese bomb Pearl Harbor less than three months later, and the Eastern States Exposition had to shut down. It shut down from 1942 through 1946 and reopened in 1947. When it reopened in 1947, they had a page in their programming catalog about the Boy Scout exhibits and service. So that was still going on, but the notion of a Mohawk Scout or a Mohawk Scout village or a Mohawk Indian village 
was history. So I consider 1941 to be the end of the Mohawk Indian village and its successors. So some final perspective. For 11 years throughout the entire second decade of the BSA's existence and beyond, the Mohawk Indian village at the Eastern States Exposition was the premier BSA sponsored annual event in the nation. More than 1,000 scouts from the 10 Eastern States from Maine to Pennsylvania spent a week or more at the exposition mingling with scouts from the other states. The BSA viewed the event's importance on par with the international jamborees held during that decade. And indeed, William C. Wessel, assistant director of camping, who was heavily involved with the Mohawk Indian Village for the entire time it was run by National, was also scoutmaster of the BSA contingent troop for the 1924 World Jamboree. The Mohawk Indian Village emblem, produced from 1924 to 1931, and issued to each of the Mohawk Village scouts, had such stature nationally that it was specifically cited in the BSA uniform regulations promulgated in early 1929. Had it not been for what we know as the Great Depression, the Mohawk Indian Village of the 1920s likely would have continued throughout the 1930s, until the exposition's hiatus during the years of World War II, and maybe thereafter. And I look forward to continuing to fill the gaps in my knowledge and the memorabilia associated with this fascinating event. And I give you this. Look familiar? The Boy Rangers of America's patch is very similar to the Mohawk Indian Village patch of the Eastern States Exposition.